Hi, and welcome on to AFTV Transfer Daily, the show that keeps you up to date with players that have been linked with a summer transfer move to Arsenal. And we are down to it. The game starts tonight. Arsenal's first game against Brentford. And um, it's a massive game. I'm going to the game. I can't wait to be back at a football, uh, an away game, an away football game. First one in 18 months um, watching the Arsenal. And it's going to be absolutely unbelievable. I, I was at the stadium, as I said to you guys yesterday, the other day. And a uh, nice little stadium. The atmosphere is going to be crazy in there tonight. And it's going to be good to be back around Arsenal fans, you know, um, you know, for a proper game. Really, really looking forward to it. And uh, it's a pressure game for Arsenal. Pressure game for Mikel Arteta. He was doing a press conference yesterday. And, um, of course, they're asking him about the game. Um, by the way, on the injury front, we know we're not going to have no Thomas Partey, no Gabriel. We're kind of going to that game with not our strongest 11 and two key players missing in Gabriel and Thomas Partey. And the news yesterday as well that neither of them are likely to be back. Well, definitely not Gabriel until after the international break. So we won't see him till mid September. Um, and possibly Partey as well, you know. So that's a huge blow. Already going into a season with a lot of fans saying not enough transfer activity has been done. And it's going to be a big, big test tonight. Sambi Laconga, looking forward to seeing him. Surely he has to start um, in place of Thomas Partey. He's looked decent in pre-season. But looking forward to the game, nevertheless. So funny enough, in talking about the, the press conference uh, yesterday, some sort of mixed messages coming out from uh, Mikel Arteta. He was asked, where are you looking to finish Um in the league this season and he weren't making it clear. He was just sort of saying, you know, we just need to improve. We need to be better than, you know, in this game and improve game on game. And we know all that, but it was kind of surprising to me. Uh, maybe it's been smart on his part because he doesn't want to say, right, top four. And then, especially when you're looking at the top four and then he doesn't make it, but, this is Arsenal Football Club and the expectations have to be high. You know, I mean, he was talking yesterday like we're a mid time uh, it's, it's the sort of press conference I'd expect from, I don't know, somebody managing, I don't know, Villa. And and, and no disrespect to Villa, but you know what I mean? I, I, he wasn't really saying that, you know, we should be in the top four. You know, whether we get there or not, it's an, another matter. And... um. He also went on to say that signings, you know, the, the transfer market has been really, really difficult and how hard it's been to get signings in and how a lot of activity is going to be done right near the end of the window, which is something I've been saying a lot. I've been saying that a lot of activity is going to happen down towards the end of the window. However, again, you could question and say, yeah, but some key targets you haven't got done. You know, uh, Arteta and Edu have not done those. Edu coming under a lot of criticism yesterday from a lot of fans. You know, the Aaron Ramsdale deal collapsing. We've been going after this for ages. We've known the price for Aaron Ramsdale. We haven't met that, and that's collapsed. That, the Buendia one, this has been a couple now. Not great for, you know... Edu, there was those pictures of him on holiday. Yeah, yeah, Not great for Edu right now. Not great in the transfer market. But you know what? A win tonight could turn all that around. On the goalkeeping front, we know the Aaron Ramsdale thing looks to have collapsed and the Arsenal have reportedly walked away from it. Um, now we've been told that they're going back in for Neto. Neto, of course, whose agent is Kia Drapchen. Of course, we know Arsenal have done loads of business with over the past and uh, not always the most successful. Cedric, Kia Drapchen, Willian, Kia Drapchen. You know what I mean? Not always great success out of some of these deals we've done using that agent. He is the agent of Neto. Now, the Athletic claim that Arsenal are back in again, looking at bringing Neto in as a, uh, as a backup. Um, we know that we've lost out as I said, on, on, on Aaron Ramsdale. Um, Barcelona, we know, desperate to get players off the wage bill, him included. He's 32 now, and he's got two years left on his current contract and also said to be interested in taking Neto on a loan deal. Again, it just seems a bit strange, this one. You know, we had Matt Ryan on a loan deal. 
could have got him on a free contract, low wages, didn't go for him, and now we're going in for Neto. It seems a bit of a mess at the moment. Or could Arsenal turn to Sam Johnson? There's been a lot of rumours talking about Arsenal behind the scenes have been talking to the representatives of Sam Johnson, sounding him out about a possible deal. Sam Johnson, of course, at West Bromwich Albion, uh, another keeper who broke into that England squad. And, uh, you know, we know we need a backup goalkeeper. And Mikel Arteta, even yesterday, talking about the need for homegrown players. You know, he, uh, he, he wants to get homegrown players into the squad as much as possible. Um, getting homegrown players into the squad is important because, you know, there are a lot of sort of changes ahead you know, remember Brexit, <laughs> we're no longer in Europe, right? So there are some changes ahead when it comes to um, buying uh, even players from Europe, which wouldn't really have been a problem in the past. So getting in homegrown players is important. Could they move for Sam Johnson? But again, Sam Johnson is going to be, you know, you're talking about up towards £20 million from West Bromwich Albion. So the goalkeeping situation is a bit of a mess. We're going to go into that game tonight. Um, with two youngsters as the backup keeper um, and Runison. You know what I mean? It's one out of those three. Um, Hossi Mawa, again, uh, another player that we've been linked with very heavily this summer transfer window. We all know the story. Last year, he was our number one target. We failed with bids, um, and he ended up staying at Lyon. And plus, as well, we heard at the time that he wanted Champions League football as well. Um, well, Arsenal set to be going back in um, for Jose Moa. There's been apparently a little bit of a trepidation from Arsenal. You know, they've done a bit of investigation according to reports and they haven't always liked some of the things they've heard about Jose Moa's attitude behind the scenes. Um, just sort of reading into it generally, um, it's kind of like, and again, this is just rumours. But it's kind of like, you know, he can be a player that likes to sulk a bit. Um, one of these players can be brilliant one week and then the next week a little bit missing. If, if you know, if they're playing like a smaller team, Leon, he's not as up for it as if they're playing PSG. That sort of thing is what's been sort of aimed at him. Um, however, he, we do know that he's a super, super talented player, attacking midfielder. We know that that's something that we are desperately in need of right now. Now, will Arsenal go in for Hossi Mawa? There's been a lot of talk that they might try and get him on a loan deal with an option to buy, which was, that would suit Arsenal down to the ground. The outlay would be less. And again, Arteta yesterday talking about the financial um, sustainability that they're trying to achieve at Arsenal. Um, but it looks like they've turned their attentions back to him. Of course, we could buy him outright for around about £22 million as well. But with that talk, it's starting to look like they're kind of moving away from the sort of Madison thing and looking maybe at a cheaper option, which would be Hossim Awa, which might make sense, you know, if you've got a limited budget. Um, what's going to happen with Alexander Lacazette? One year left um, on his contract. That means come January, he can go and talk to any club and set up a deal to walk away for absolutely nothing um, at the end of the season. You know these ones. It happens to us all the time. Despite the fact that we were told it's not going to happen again, it's happening again, right? Um, Arsenal have apparently offered him to Roma. Um, you know, Roma desperately in need of a striker. Roma, they're looking at Edin Dzeko. Of course, we know that Roma really want to get Tammy Abraham as well. Arsenal want Tammy Abraham. Arsenal are saying to Roma, you can have Lacazette. Um, and, of course, you know, Roma... They're after their number one target, which is not Alexander Lacazette, which their number one target, of course, is Tammy Abraham, um, who are also, as I said, are also after. So, again, when Arteta talks about a lot of activity going down towards the end of the window, he is right because those are the type of deals that could go right down to the wire and we won't know what's happening until it goes down to the wire. It'd be interesting to see does Lacazette start tonight. I think he will play. Um, but if you start to see Lacazette being left out of teams and not playing at all, then you start to um, realise, and this is going to be quite important in watching these games from now till the end of the transfer window, you start to realise that 
they're trying to keep him away from injuries because there's a possibility that he could be on the move. So let's keep an eye on that. Hector Bellerin's another one as well. Um, Rumours today that Bayern Munich are interested in him and um, may be willing to do a swap deal with Corentin Tolisso. Um, that's interesting. Corentin Tolisso, of course, who we spoke about a couple of days ago on the show, um, being linked with Arsenal. Um, very, very good player. Attacking midfielder. We need an attacking midfielder. A swap deal for Hector Bellerin. I think that would be a good little move, to be honest, if if that was the case for Arsenal. But that's what's been spoken about today. Another rumour. Not really a, a great source on that, but that's a, a rumour that's coming out. And Bernardo Silva, a player that Arsenal have been um, linked to. We know that he's uh, set to leave Manchester City. You know, he said he wants a new challenge. He wants to move on. Uh, Portuguese transfer expert Felipe Diaz claiming um, that Bernardo Silva's rejected a move to Arsenal, saying that he wants to play Champions League football. Um, that's what he wants. You know, who can blame him? You know, he's he's in the final last year. You know, to go from the final to playing in no Europe whatsoever, even the Europa League for a player like that would be a massive step back. And that is a big problem that Arsenal has right now when trying to attract some of the very biggest players. So um, it all kicks off. Let's hope we can get off to a great start. I think um, Mikel Arteta needs a good start for him personally. You know, just because of the fact that, you know, he's under pressure. I, I could see that in the press conference yesterday and in the way in which he was answering certain questions. He needs to get off to a good start. Get off to a good start. Get off to a start with a win. You know, get the confidence flowing back in that team. Get a Bamiyang scoring. He's very important that he starts turning up as well. And then hopefully we can see out the transfer window with a couple of good signings to bolster us and really get us, you know, a bit of momentum going after a real sort of miserable summer, really, when it comes to transfers. Thanks for watching the show. Um, don't forget to check out all of our content today um, around match day. We've got um, so much content coming out today. We, we, we're going to be covering the game. We've got a build-up to the game coming up later on. We've got the starting 11, which will come out just about an hour or so before the game. We're going to be doing our match day live where we'll be watching along to the game with the fans in the studio. I'll be at the game. I'll be interviewing fans after the game as well. I'll be, you know, I'll be capturing the mood of the whole game down there at Brentford. We'll also be in the studio. And after the game, we're going to be taking all of your videos and calls. Send them in, right? The best ones will be used and the guys will be discussing the game with you guys after. So comprehensive cover here on AFTV. So make sure you check it out. Thanks for watching the show and I'll see you tomorrow.